Hello guys, this is Tripped Over, but today, you can call me Marilyn Monroe. Today we're going to be summarizing the book, The Crucible, by Arthur Miller. Now The Crucible takes place in Salem, Massachusetts, in 1692. A very interesting time in history when, if you were a witch, you'd burn. If you weighed as much as a duck, you were a witch. And most importantly, if you were turned into a newt, you didn't always get better. Now, the story starts off in the Reverend Paris's household with his daughter Betty lying unconscious and very ill. But the kicker is that the night before, all the girls in Salem were out at midnight, being led by a black slave by the name of Tibita, and they're all dancing nude in the woods. Now this itself sounds like the setup for a porno, but it wasn't. They were spitting out curses and spells, and they're just normal girls, so none of this is working. They're just spitting out blubber. But anyways, the local physician pretty much says, eh, I mean, she, she, she seems pretty fine, but I don't have to tell you. This is where some of the other family was like, hey, my daughter also is feeling pretty ill. And it's, they're faking it. I mean, I'm not going to lie, they're faking it immediately. You know they're faking it. And the main girl, Abigail, pretty much warns her friend, Mercy Lewis, and the proctor servant, Mary Warren, not to reveal that they were casting spells in the woods. And then eventually, Betty wakes up, Abigail tells all the girls in Betty's room that, Hey, you do this? You tell anyone this? I'll beat the hell out of you. So you better keep quiet. And pretty much they tell them that if they drank blood, well, if they tell anyone that they drank blood and cast a spell in order to kill Goody Proctor, which is John Proctor's wife, that she'll kill him. Well, she won't kill him, but she'll beat him up. She'll beat the girls up. This is when Betty's like, I'm out of here. She just closes her eyes, passes out. And then later on, John Proctor and Abigail have a private talk about their former relationship. They were bang buddies. It's not a lie. And he's like, yo, Abigail. I was just in it for the booty. I don't like you like that. So you can get out of my life. But he was like, please... Don't do this to me. I was working in your house. It was true love. You know you liked it. And then he's just like, no. Elizabeth wasn't feeling it. She's my wife, man. And he's just like, Abigail, I don't ever want to see you again. And she, Abigail's like, okay. And she just leaves. Like, She leaves, but deep down she's like, he wants me. And so she begins to plan her plot of revenge to get back John Proctor so that he will acknowledge his feelings for her. And Betty wakes up eventually and she's like, Mrrr! she's having a freak attack, seizing everywhere. And this is when Rebecca Nurse, a very insignificant character, I'm not going to lie, visits her, calms her down, and pretty much Rebecca warns Paris that identifying the witchcraft is the cause of Betty's illness will set very dangerous problems in the Salem. So Rebecca's like, don't do it. You're going to cause issues. But you know, Paris is like, I'll do what I want, man. I'll do what I want. Eventually, Mr. Putnam asks Rebecca to visit Ruth and attempt to wake her, which is his passed out daughter, faking it. And Ruth, to the Putnam family, is the only child who survived infancy. So she goes over there and says, you know what? Child's fine. She's faking it. Eventually, Putnam, Proctor, and Giles Corey, which is like John's friend, argues with Paris about his salary and other expectations, saying like, hey, this is kind of suspicious that uh, you're kind of accusing people whose lands you want. It's kind of strange, bud. You better stop it. We'll fucking kill you. Not really, but yes, warn him, like, don't do this. You're going to cause issues. And you know what? You won't like the end result. 
So pretty much they argue about this for a little bit. And then Putnam accuses Proctor of stealing wood from land that he doesn't own. Proctor's like, hey, I purchased that land from Francis Nurse five months ago. You can't do this. I mean, they argue about garbage. It's pure garbage what they argue about. And eventually, Reverend Hale, who was sent over to identify the witchcraft, is like, yo, I'm in town. To investigate the witchcraft, obviously. The people are like, hey, you are a god at this stuff. You are which identifying God, can you please help us? So pretty much he goes, he learns that the girls were dancing in the woods with Tibuta. And that Tibuta can obviously conjure spirits, which she can't. Abigail blames Tibuta for enticing her to sin. Hale then basically questions Tibuta, and she admits that he, she has seen the devil as Goody Good and Goody Osborne, which she's basically blaming people to save her own skin. Abigail also confesses and states that, hey, the devil's been uh, making deals with these other people too, but I can, but I repent now, so it's all good with me, but these people. Betty eventually's like, yo, I can finally wake up and stop pretending. They name some more individuals and Hale's like, hmm, I'll go question these people. Eight days later, Elizabeth discovers that Proctor spoke to Abigail privately while in Salem. And she's like, hmm. I mean, Elizabeth was always very suspicious of John and Abigail's relationship, so she kind of knows that they've been that they've been banging. But anyways, Elizabeth and Proctor argue about this. When Mary Warren, sort of like their ward, comes home, and she says that Elizabeth has been blamed for witchcraft, that she's been accused of it. And she gives Elizabeth a poppet, which is basically like an old-fashioned doll that she made while sitting in the courtroom. Mary Warren tells Proctor that some of the used, girls accused her again, but the courts dismissed, dismissed it because Mary Warren defended her. Hale arrives at the Proctor house, questions Proctor and his poor church attendants. He's like, yo, you have been in church. Proctor says, I've been working, I'm sorry about this, I haven't committed any sins, but he's thinking in the back of his mind, what's up with Abigail? You know, I feel kind of bad, but, you know, it's pretty much too much of that, and Hale questions Elizabeth as well, and Proctor reveals that Abigail admitted to him that the witchcraft charges were false, so, Hale's starting to think now, this is when Marshall Hedrick then arrives, arrests Elizabeth, says that you've been charged with witchcraft. Then, later in the evening, Abigail feels a needle stab while eating dinner, and she accuses Elizabeth of doing this, even though she's been arrested. The authorities of Salem search the Proctor house, and what do they discover? The poppet, the doll with a needle in its stomach. Hale questions Mary about this and learns that she sold the poppy and stored the needle inside. And pretty much Mary says that she also tells him that Abigail saw her sew the poppy in the store than you. And this even gives more reason to suspect Elizabeth of being a witch. So eventually the court starts convicting people like Martha Corey, Rebecca Nurse, and Giles Corey tells the court that he has proof that the Putnam is accusing his neighbor of witchcraft in order to gain their lands, which pretty much has been brought up before him. The judge, Dan Ford, asks the names of the witness that Corey gave the information. And Corey's like, I'm not doing that. So they're like, you know what? You're under arrest. Now all these people, they get killed. Like, they're accused of witchcraft because of their high morals. Because they refuse to give up others and repeat the cycle. Mary Warren then tells the court that she pretended to see spirits. spirits. She admits everything. And this is when Abigail and all the other girls stand like, She's possessing me! She's possessing me! Basically saying, See, she's a witch. Mary eventually conforms, because she doesn't want to be killed. She doesn't want to be put on trial. And she says that John Proctor has been the one who's been the one behind all the witchcraft. Eventually John is arrested, and it's find out John learns that Elizabeth is pregnant, and that she's not going to be executed right away until the baby's been born. So Hale goes up to John he says, John, please just admit, admit to witchcraft, give up some names. You don't need to die like this. 
Elizabeth has been taken off trial, and she's allowed to go free. Months pass. John sort of festers over all this. And eventually, they give him a piece of paper that says, Sign your name. Admit that you have been contorting with the devil. And we'll let you go. And this is where John does the dumbest mistake of his life. Literally, the last mistake of his life. He says, no. I have one thing in my life. And it's my name. And I refuse to give that up. So what do they do? They kill him. Kind of a fruitless death, but you know, that's life. And that's just how the book ends, with John just going the gallows. What does this book teach you? Don't be a witch. Don't consort with the devil. And most importantly, if you are a witch, you better not be in Salem. Because you're gonna die. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed, and like and subscribe if you did. I'll see you next time. Good night.